Well, today we're going to talk about a few uh, practical methods to battling the squash vine borer, which if any of you have grown any type of cucurbits or any vining plants in that family, you know these things are particularly devastating and they're very tough to beat once they've started boring into uh, the stem down here. They're really tough to beat. I've been doing pumpkins now for several years and uh, the first year I didn't do so well. I did get a few pumpkins, but only because I planted like 20 plants. By the end of the season, I only had five left and the vine borers killed the rest of them. I had no idea what they were my first year. And, you know, I just had to sit there and watch my pumpkins get taken apart. So a few years though, I've been able to overcome them and find various ways of dealing with them to where you can still get a really good harvest. And you can see from my past videos that I get pumpkins and I get really good harvest even in my little tiny suburban backyard here I don't have a farm I don't have acres of land or anything so uh, this is just in my backyard but I managed to get lots of pumpkins uh, eaten ones and carving ones and I'll show you how to get rid of the vine borer so uh, pretty easy there's one thing you really need to do more than anything and this is a game changer it definitely was a game changer for me so we'll come over here you see this plant here oh boy I'll remove some of these leaves here and you can actually see vine borer eggs down there. It's been visited a few times. This is particularly bad because this is a really hard spot to deal with here. So one way you can stop this from happening, I'll come over here, I'll show you this pumpkin plant here. You see how I went over this one with dirt? Okay, it can't lay eggs in here. Most of the time, the moth will not lay eggs in dirt. I've heard of them doing that but I have not ever witnessed them they always want to lay them on the stem for one main reason and that is protection you might notice over here we come back to this one see how well they're sticking in the roots there those eggs have no danger of being blown off or taken off by a critter that lives in the dirt so that's something the moth does to protect it it's also something we can use against the moth so by mounding over it right here with dirt and you don't have to use dirt you can use mulch or something else but by mounting over the base of the stem here the moth can no longer lay eggs on this one like it laid on this one over here because the dirt is a dangerous place for the eggs those eggs hatch there's all kinds of other uh, bugs and insects around that'll grab them and eat them so it the moth will always try and lay them up on the stem that's the point if it lays an egg up here you know i can catch that much easier and if it kills the leaf well that's just the leaf you know i don't want it to kill the main vine here and so they will try and lay them up here too. Okay, but it's much easier to find them and deal with them up here than it is way down here. It's just far more difficult to deal with them there on that spot than it is like up here. So that to me was a game changer to force the moth to lay the egg up higher where I can see it and deal with it much easier. And you don't just have to use dirt you can use mulch. I've even seen people using aluminum foil, uh, certain types of clay like kaolin clay. I've seen people using that. What do we do when it's already laid eggs though and we haven't mounded over it? Maybe we didn't get a chance to or whatever else. What do we do with that? Well, I can show you a few things on how to deal with that. Now, when you find these eggs here, if you see them so out in the open like this, you do want to remove them. So one thing you can do, you'd have to remove them physically. So some people use sticky tape or whatever, you can try that. I'm just gonna get them by hand if I can. You wanna have also a little thing of water and soap nearby, because you wanna dispose of them in there, like just dish soap and water, a little container. If you just pick them and discard them, there is a chance they can make it back up onto your plant. You don't want that. They know where to go to feed, so. So this is one way you can get rid of the moth. You see it down there? You can just get them with the insecticidal soap. It's not going to live long after that. The ingredients in this, I don't have the ingredients up, but it's potassium salts of fatty, oh, here they are, sorry. Potassium salts of fatty acids is the main ingredient. That's what will kill them. It destroys their exoskeleton. So very good to use on the moths. Be sure to see my video where I test this on the moth, and you can see how effective it is. So there is basically what's left of the vine borer. He's still moving a little bit, actually it's a female, but it's still moving a little bit, mainly because I watered this down a bit because I didn't have much left, but there was a bunch of foam in the bottom of the bottle. 
So I just went ahead and filled it up with water and there's still enough potassium salts in there to uh, kill these things. Usually the full strength stuff will kill them right away. This I'll have to spray them a few more times, but it definitely takes them out. But uh, get the full strength stuff if you can. I'm just using this until I get back to the store. So that is what is left of our vine borer moth right there. Kind of cool that one showed up right here where I could demonstrate. So it was dying. Like I said, if you use the full strength insecticidal soap, it kills them instantly. I was using maybe half strength, third of strength. So it slows them down. It would eventually kill them too, but I wanted to be sure. So I just uh, dumped them in this, uh, what's left of this soapy water. I put cucumber beetles in and stuff. If you can remove them this way, get the moss. That's the first step in beating them. Prevention is key in beating these things. So yes, removing them by hand is key, but you see how tiny they are. They're so small, sometimes it's just impossible to remove all of them. How can you find all those little eggs on here? You can't. So we're gonna have another way to deal with them too. So if you can hear me over the yard work going on, I'm just gonna go over a few simple products I use to ensure that uh, those eggs are taken care of. Is should they hatch, the larva should not get very far. They should die pretty quickly. So I'll go over a few products you can use. Uh, most of them are organic. One of them is not, but it might be necessary. But anyway, so the first one is neem oil. This is neem max. I just put it in the sprayer here. We're going to use that. That should help devastate the eggs so they don't even hatch. Insecticidal soap, which is not full strength, but if it was, it would be even better. We're going to use a spritz of that. And then uh, we're going to use this. This is Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew also known as Spinosed. If you know anything about Spinosed, it's basically just rotted rum. Gets the bugs kind of tipsy, gets them drunk and then it kills them. Paralyzes them so they can't eat. That's important. And then here I have, this is what I don't want to use, but I'm going to because I really don't want to lose my pumpkins. And it's early enough in the season that I don't think it'll be a problem. And this is uh, seven dust. This will definitely take care of the eggs. If the other products fail so right now i'm just concerned about destroying the eggs and making sure the larvae do not get into the stems they are just going to spray some neem oil pretty good get it in there pretty good make sure it floods it really good like that the plant will recover and my plant's in the shade right now mostly so it shouldn't be a huge problem for it anyway but yeah neem oil is something you want to use we're also going to give it a spritz of this Insecticidal soap, this should devastate the eggs too. I know you can see the roots showing, but that's okay. We're gonna take care of that in a second too. And uh, the final product here, they're gonna use some seven dust. Like I said, normally I don't like to do this, but really, really wanna make sure those eggs are gone and that they do not hatch. And if they do hatch, they won't be alive very long. So this alone here would be good enough to not only destroy the eggs, but also stop the moth from coming here again, because the moth will be killed by seven dust too. It's a contact killer, that's why I use it. But I really don't want the moth to even think about it or even be able to find the base of the stem. So just like I said for that plant over here, we're gonna mound over this one and we're gonna kind of hide the base of the stem and that way it will protect it and force the moth to lay eggs up higher. Okay, so I'm gonna do everything that I just did before I mounted it with one more exception. I'll show you in a second. Okay, so went ahead and reapplied everything with one addition, and that is the Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew Deep Soak. Once I mound over this, just before I put the seven dust on here, I went ahead and did a deep soak. I mixed this up according to the directions on the package, and I just uh, dumped it on there and just soaked it as if I was watering the plant. So if those eggs do hatch, they've got three poisons now that are going to kill them. Really only one of these is good enough. In fact, this one and this one are probably good enough. You probably don't even have to use these two, but I like to sleep better at night. You can also use BT, but same thing, instead of spraying, definitely recommend mixing a water jug like this and doing a deep soak of it. The other thing with the deep soak is when you do it, you want to pour it so it basically floods. It should actually come up through your plant a little bit, like almost like when you're pouring water too fast, like you water them too fast. You kind of want to do that just a little bit. 
And the reason why is because if it's flooded and comes up through there, it is definitely flooding any holes or cavities that have been eaten into by vine borers. In other words, it's gonna flood in where they're eating inside the plant. I know some people actually say they inject BT into the plant. I don't even know how you do that because the vines are not hollow. See, this stem here is not hollow. The leaves are, but the vines aren't. So I don't even know how you would inject something into there. So much better to deep soak because the deep soak will flood into any little crevices that they've eaten into and it will flood them in there and it will kill them. Spraying and injecting is probably not going to work as well. This will deter the moth and should those eggs hatch, should destroy the eggs really. The soap and the neem oil really should destroy the eggs, but should they hatch, they won't be alive very long. But again, the most practical way is to do just what I did over here. And that is just to mound over the base of the stem so that the moth can't find it to begin with and it has to lay it up here on a leaf or further up on the vine where it's much easier to reach and much easier to deal with. It's very hard to deal with hatched larvae when they're way down inside your the base of your stem and you just can't get to them. And probably should go without saying, but when you're done using any kind of insecticide, just make sure you wash your hands real good before you eat or do other things. So if you have any questions or comments, just leave them below. That's it for this video. I am going to go inside with the central air because it is like 95 degrees out here, plus the heat index. So it is cooking out here. But you all have a good day and I'll talk to you soon.